Okay, Tommy, I got the fire pit all cleaned up for you. All right, for the top, I would recommend using any kind of decking material that you would use outside. And I like to use EPE, mm -hmm. also known as ironwood. Right, we've seen you use it a lot before. It comes to us from Brazil, and you love it because it's almost indestructible. It's almost indestructible. It has resins in it that really protect it against the weather. Nice. Now our top is going to be round. Yep. And I want to have about a one inch finished overhang on each side. So I would start with a board that's a little bit longer on the overhang so we can then cut it. You also, you notice that the board in the middle is going to be the longest. As you move out to the edge, it yeah. gets shorter. Right, so as you go way out here, if you use the board this length, you'd have a ton of waste. Right. Well, let me show you a way to mark the board so we get the best yield out of each one. All right, now here's a eight-foot piece of deck. Take that piece, flip it over, and lay it on top of the boards. Now, we want to have a one-inch overhang all around the perimeter when we're finished, plus a little extra while we make it. So I'm going to measure right here. Let's go about an inch and a half. And I'll measure an inch and a half on this side, put a mark, and that will cut. All right, so if you notice, the two boards in the middle are pretty close to the same dimension. But now that we get further away, now if I take and mark my inch and a half here, and then I mark down here, inch and a half, where I'm going to cut it. Take that board, and I'll probably be able to use this one out here. Let's see. Okay. Slide this one under there. And this one. That. Perfect. Two more pieces. All right, good. All of our boards are cut to rough length. The next thing I want to deal with is this joint right here. This is an eased edge. And it's an eased edge because it's decking and you don't want to have a sharp edge. You also open up the joint so rainwater will run through that and not lay on the deck. But we don't want rainwater to run through there and fill up our fire pit. We need to get rid of that eased edge. And to do that, we're going to make two passes through our table saw. With the boards all trued up, we can glue them together with some exterior glue. I've marked the center line on each board so I could line up all the pieces. All right, now we want to snug up the clamps just a little bit so we can make our boards even or flush. Okay, that's good. Now we can tighten them up, but we don't want to make them too tight to take all the glue out of the joint. Now we'll just clean up the excess glue with a wet rag. A lot easier to do it now than after it dries. And we'll give it about an hour to set up. All right, the glue's all set up. Now let's sand off the high spots. Okay, okay. Ready to trace a circle on here? Well, we could trace a circle, but I want a one inch overhang. So I set my scribes and follow it all the way around the perimeter and then cut it with a jigsaw. But I have a better way to do that. You do? We're going to cut it with a router. Really? First thing I need to do is find the center. I'm going to take this point right here, over here. I'm going to divide that in half. So 33, 16, and 3 quarters. And I'm going to find the center of the board this way. That's uh, two and a half. That's the center of my table right there. Yeah. I'm going to drive a little hole right there. All right. Now what I've built is a jig or a template to set my router on. Okay. It has two positions. Right here where this screw is, is the center of my table. Right here where this hole is, is where my router will go. And the distance between the two is the radius of the circle. Clever. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this screw 
and I'm going to position it over that hole that I drilled. This is the tricky part. Get it? Yep. All right. Now I'm just going to snug this up a little bit. I don't want to over tighten it. The hole in this template is the same size as my router collar. With the finished piece raised off the table, I want to make a few passes with my router, cutting it a little bit at a time. Let's see how it fits. Looks pretty sweet right there, Tommy. Pretty good. Now the next thing we have to think about is rain. When the table gets wet from rain, the water runs off the edge of the table and it actually get pulled right under the table and it'll fill up the pit. Surface tension, like underneath a windowsill. Absolutely. What we need to do is cut a kerf around the perimeter to stop that from happening. Let me guess, router, right? Absolutely. I'm just gonna reposition this screw in about an inch and a quarter mm. and that will change the radius of our circle. This time, I only need to do a shallow groove, not all the way through. Using a router with a roundover bit will dress up the outside edge. We'll do that on the top and the bottom. To keep the tabletop flat, we're going to install two cleats perpendicular to the boards on the top. We're going to pre-drill holes in the cleats larger than the screws so the screws can move as the top expands and contracts. Okay, Sammy, just get this cleaned up. There we go. All right, let's try it out. Now those cleats are going to keep the top flat, but it's also going to let air circulate underneath it. 